Now, here we are down at the stream. The stream is at the bottom of the lowlands. I brought with me my eco-forensic testing kit. And I'm using this kit to test the hidden secrets of the water, looking at the almost invisible animals and also looking at the acid, alkali or pH balance of the water. This is how I start. I take a measuring cylinder and a sample tube. And I'm going to collect the water sample in the weedy area. Very quiet area. The stream, put that there. Now I'm just going to collect another water sample for pH testing, which I'll put there in the kit. Now to see how the testing happens, you're going to have to come in and look closely. Now we're going to take a close look at some of the animals in this measuring cylinder. The way I do that is to put the measuring cylinder inside a light proof tube like so. The tube has windows in it, like this. I'm going to put a three millimeter grid over the top of those windows. And I'm going to hold it in place with a rubber band. And then I'm going to put a lid over the top like this, which is also light proof. Now the little animals love light. They don't like darkness and they will collect near these windows. And then I can look at them with my magnifying glass. Now I'm going to take these little creatures and find a sunny place. Now, this spot I know is going to be pretty sunny. I'll leave it there for about an hour. Great. Now it's time to measure the pH of our water sample. First of all, I'll move our Burleasy funnel. You'll meet that one later out of the way. Now I take two mils of the water with our pipette and put it in the corner here, like so. I get some pH paper, a pair of tweezers, and I take one piece and we leave it for 30 seconds for the colour to develop. Now I take the water sample and I match it to the colour chart in the Eco Forensic book and I find it's 6.5. Now this is just a tiny bit acid and this is completely normal for a forest stream where decomposing vegetation makes things just slightly acid. That's very nice forest environment. Oh look, it's been about an hour. We should see how our mini beasts are going. I'll take the laboratory with me, and off we go. Now our water sample has been in a bright spot for about an hour. The animals will have collected in front of the windows. I'm going to be looking for them with my magnifying glass, and I'm looking for animals from unpolluted water, animals that live in semi-polluted water, and maybe even some animals in very polluted water. And I hope I find these. What am I going to do? Well, I have to get down without moving that tube and I look through the windows with my magnifying glass and something rather magic happens. Now we've done all the field tests that we need to do on the creek but for the other testing, we need to go back to the lab. Here we are. Now, welcome to the Wild Science Laboratory. As you can see, I brought up the soil samples from the lowland and the upland forest, and I've already got my workbench set up, ready to go. Now, first, we're going to look into the secrets of the soils. The first sample we're going to look at is this beautiful lowland forest soil. And the first experiment we're going to do is to find out what the soil is made of. To do that, I'm going to take 50 mils of the soil, like this, and that looks to be 50 mils of soil. Then we add 
50 mils of water, just plain tap water, cold tap water. I'll tip it in, 50 and 50 makes 100. And as if by magic, it's going down. 50 mils of water and 50 mils of soil is not 100 mils of mud. Already we know, of course, there's air in the soil. Next, put my hand on, and this is a chance to get really messy in the name of science. There. And we've gone out down to about 80 mils. That is air. Now I'm going to put this in the workbench, like so. Now we're going to leave this for up to several hours. This is our lowland soil. Down the bottom are the large soil particles as we travel up. You might not be able to see it on the screen, but the particles are getting finer and finer in layers. At this point here, silt and clay are falling out as a very fine layer. In the water is suspended clay, and it might take a whole day for that to come out. Up the top, about here, is a ring of floating humus, and it's humus which makes the soil rich. It's dead plant material. Now we can compare it with our upland soil. If you look at the instructions, you'll see some pictures which give names to all the different layers that you're likely to find inside your soil samples. Soil scientists use this information to classify different sorts of soil across the planet. Now, the next test we're going to do is to find out what tiny animals are living in this soil. This will tell us how healthy or how good the soil is. Now, we can use the magnifying glass to look for the animals, but it's very hard to see them because they're buried in the soil. The question is, how can we get the animals out of the soil into a jar so we can look at them with our magnifying glass? And the answer is this. This is a Burleazy Tulgren funnel. And there are two of them in this kit, so you can test two soil samples at the same time. How does it work? First, we need to set the funnel up. The first thing I do is I put a cotton ball at the bottom of the funnel. Next, we get some ordinary tap water, like so. And I take three mils of water with the pipette and we squirt it down the bottom. Why do we do that? Well, we're going to scare tiny animals into the bottom of the funnel. They love the humidity, they like damp, but they don't want to drown. So the water is held in the cotton ball. Next, we put in a filter. There are two of these in the kit. Next, we start to load soil on top of the filter like this. We put it on carefully. It doesn't matter if a bit goes through, that is not a problem. And we load, 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 until the funnel is full. Now our funnel is full of damp soil, filled with tiny animals. Now we move it under a bright light like this. This is how it works. The heat and light from this lamp will dry out the soil and the little animals will run down through the soil, through the filter and fall into the jar below. They won't drown because the water is in the cotton ball. In two or three days time, there will be hundreds and hundreds of tiny animals at the bottom of the tube and we can look at it with our magnifying glass. If you look inside the Eco Forensic Lab instructions, you'll find pictures of nearly all the soil animals that you're likely to find in your soil samples. All of these are really, really tiny and you really need your magnifying glass to see them in real life. The bigger the range of animals that you can find, the healthier and more balanced your soil sample. But if you find, for instance, just thousands of these and nothing else, it means the soil could be very unbalanced and maybe unhealthy. 